So I charged Jules up to uh, 70% last night. Um, and we're going to go on a uh, take uh, Marion for her test this morning up in Durham. And then we're going to head over to Mebbin. And so we're, you know, fixing to head out. I got 193 miles. I've unplugged her because I'm going to back her out and park her and turn climate on. And it's cold outside. It's 30 degrees. Kitties are doing good. We're up early this morning because of my test. A um, little bit of ice on the boardwalk. Don has Jules preheated. It's not supposed to rain until 10 o'clock tonight. We're going to hold the weathermen to that today. Our first stop today is Duke Regional Hospital. It used to be Durham Regional. I'm supposed to be there at 9.45. Currently at Sand, we'll be there at 9.28. We'll be taking off in just a minute. Don will um, be coming out with this coffee here. He's just on his last step. I just hopped in the car. So 928, 40 miles, 48 minutes. This is actually the hospital where I had my babies. It's not too far from IBM is sort of how I ended up with some Duke doctors up in that area. Far from the house now, but convenient for appointments, uh, you know, over lunch or in the afternoon when I was at work. Red shirt, Tesla jacket. Yeah. Um. Here, let's put it in the back, I'm sorry. Actually, um, I'll put it in the door pocket. Don did blow the driveway after his run yesterday. No more sweet gum balls. Well, sort of. Yeah, I didn't. The ones that are in the little cracks, I didn't dig out. But see some robins up here. Yeah, but let me tell you, running on the side of the road, if you see oh, part of my run I, uh, up on Wagstaff, it's very similar to this effect over here. Yeah. You see in the grass, and it's like I have to actually be very careful because they're like little uh, BBs or marbles. Uh, when you're running, roll. Right onto roll. Howard Road. Yep, yep. Well, I would have also blown the cul de sac, but. Well, we season. are going to have a little bit of sun today. I think officially the forecast was partly cloudy. We'll take it. We'll take whatever amount of sun it wants to give us. I guess since I'm not supposed to have a lot of vitamin D, less sun is probably better right now. But, you know, it's winter time and I have very little exposed skin because of the cold with my jacket on so I'm not going to worry about driving around in the sun too much. Yeah, I'm all snuggly over here. You are? Yeah, I got my nice hot coffee. I got my Tesla jacket on. I got my sweatshirt on. I got a t-shirt. I'm, I'm like... Toasty, huh? Oh yeah, I'm fixing to knock out. If I didn't have the coffee to keep me awake, I'd probably be taking an autopilot snooze here. <laughs> Donnie, he would never do I'd that. Never do that. <laughs> He'd want to do it though. Mm. He's ready. He says on the interstate, especially, yeah. he's on ready the, for. On the call the other night with the Tesla owners group, we have a, a bi weekly um, meet, it, meet up. Meet up. Since on, we can't meet in person. Yeah, it's actually kind of handy. Uh, um, and I said, uh, I'll be glad to when they do the, the level four, when you get on like the interstate and it's quote legal for you to just let the car drive. I'll be, I'll be happy for that. And I think that's going to happen. Sooner than later. Yeah, it won't be 100% of the interstate, but certain stretches, like you get out there. Here to Wilmington. Here to Wilmington. You know, yeah. it'll, it'll be maybe if it might have to be during the daylight or might have to be uh, during. Not uh, raining. Not raining. I mean, I get, I understand all the. Stipulations. Yeah, but um, anyway, I look forward to that. And Elon, in the call with. Uh, Sandy Monroe mentioned that uh, about the uh, the geofence stuff. Uh, he did talk about that. When I came down up 55 to Apex Holly Springs, these lights here, they not every, yeah, see we slowed there a little bit. The car keeps thinking that that is a stoplight, even though it's not in my lane and it's but it's red and it's over there on the side and I, I really need to understand from Zeb and full self-driving the real beta full self-driving if it's doing that because let me tell you you know you, you you're trained in the current level of the FSD beta that's that the fleet has you're sort of trained oh I'm coming up on a stoplight it starts to break you hit the stalk or the gas pedal uh, excuse me the accelerator pedal old habits die hard 
you're tra sort of trained, but when you're going down the road and there's no light in your lane and all of a sudden you start braking for that light off to the side, it's really, it's really annoying. Now this one is happening in conjunction possibly with the stoplight, so it's okay. But there are several of these U-turn, super intersection, turn around things on 55, which God help us, I really don't think they're that great. Um, where, you know, it's causing the car to do this braking. And I understand why it's doing it, and I try to remember. And of course, I have the option of turning off the FSD beta, but I don't want to do that. So I'll just continue to complain about the braking. <laughs> And I'm sure it didn't do it every time, but it did it most of the time. Like I know if you're in the left lane, it oh, really yeah. sees those red um, arrows. And yeah. again, this is another example where we're right at the stoplight, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, that was autopilot took us over a lane there. It sees that curved line through the middle of the intersection and it follows the line. And um, I actually, a year ago, let the DOT know that that was bad. Now, I remember Sandy on the interview with Elon, yeah. he said, darn these highways, they got to fix this paint. And Elon's response was, well, the car needs to handle every situation, and I don't care about the paint. I heard, I didn't hear That's him say, he, he didn't he say, that. I don't care about the paint. Right. Yeah, see here it was breaking. I could yeah. feel the car yeah, decelerating, they're still, they're still and it's because of this. Right. Um, Elon said, I, essentially, not verbatim, I don't care about the paint. Well, I got news that I got to tell him that it's going to be a combination of the car being foolproof and good paint. That I do think paint matters. I do think paint is helpful. I do think cars can get into trouble, especially in construction to zones. Um, see here is sort of okay because it's yellow, but that's not always yellow there. Right. Um, so I think the paint, anyway, I let the DOT know that that curved line through the middle of that intersection was not good for full self-driving vehicles and they needed to reconsider how they painted that intersection. Um, and they said, yeah, we'll look into it. And that's been over a year and I haven't done a darn thing, which is of course no surprise to us because I'm sure they've got bigger fish to fry than worrying about some woman that drives a Tesla complaining about the paint through that intersection. But still, it was good feedback. And the sooner the DOTs and all of the various states start thinking about how can we synergize with full self-driving cars, because it's not gonna just be Tesla. You know, it's not like it's just for those special Tesla people. It's going to be for lots of car companies. And we're just leading the way. We're just helping find all the pitfalls and handling, figuring out how to handle edge cases and a step ahead of everybody for sure. But it's going to be everybody. So especially with new construction, can we really think about it with regard to new construction, new road projects especially? You know, we had this fantastic turnpike here, uh, I-540. This leg is how many years old, Donnie? Six, maybe? Yeah, maybe a little longer. Maybe uh, time flies when you're getting old, so I don't know exactly yeah, what year it was. after opened. I retired. Right, I retired. after in 2007. It eight, eight, yeah, actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, December the 31st, January 1st. Let's not split hairs. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's just I never got to take it to work. Right, so we not. know it was after 2000 and seven something anyway um but they built this road and it had all of these great features cameras the whole way overhead signage wide lanes really great soundproofing for the neighborhoods that it went through all this stuff and not just here where they're putting the follow-on loop around but the whole thing they've moved the paint and they've rutted out the old lines and they so we have this white black line thing happening in a lot of the spots because they moved the lines. I never could exactly, I mean, it, you tell me, maybe that's for on purpose for a reason, but it wasn't like that originally. And um, so even this really nice turnpike has sort of had enough changes, let's call them changes since it opened that it's not as great as it was in the beginning when all the lanes were perfect and there was no, see here you can yeah. see where they etched out the road, the line and put it and moved it and I don't know why they did all of that you know this was a, a very well planned thing and they were so proud of it and they opened it up and well I still wish um, Elon would have a presence on the East Coast and we might make use of this turnpike or some other local roads that have opened up that would be a good um, test bed certainly for our interstates okay for um, 
on the, you know, drivers uh, don't have to pay attention. So, anyway, I'm talkative. It's better than thinking about my test. Well, because of COVID, we haven't been up this way in a long time. Normally, we would have come to um, the 4th of July fireworks at the Durham Bulls baseball game. We usually take in one baseball game a year. Don used to go with his friend Wally uh, season, tickets. season tickets and they would go like every Thursday night. Yeah. Um, even when we were dating early on, they would go, which was, you know, totally fine. Um, but we didn't make it up here this year because pretty much they didn't play or they played, but they didn't have um, a lot of stuff happening in downtown Durham here. They, or they played and then they didn't have um, uh, people in the stands or it just didn't work out. I know they didn't have the normal fireworks thing. So that was kind of disappointing because they're really good. Yeah, here's the actual ball field there. Here's the main entrance here on the corners kind of in the shade. We're getting off at North Duke Street here to head across downtown, which is not that big over to where um, Durham Regional Hospital is sort of on the north side of town. Certainly on the north side of downtown. We'll be going past the spot up here where they lost all of those old antique Porsche cars. They had a gas line explosion and it took out a coffee shop and it took out the, the business next door, the storage area next door with all these Porsche cars. It was really a it took out it was a sad one of the rarest ones ever yep and it was you know the most sad thing was is that the poor guy at the coffee shop he just didn't understand how dangerous. how dangerous it was and he lost his life in that accident so that was um that was very very sad as a family man and a yep. business um business person but i'll keep running here for just a minute more because it's just like one block up and there's a mural there to the left and uh yeah. Yeah, Liggett and Meyer Tobacco Company. Quality products, quality people is on this building over here to the right. There's a long history of tobacco. You don't see tobacco stuff in downtown Raleigh, but you really, really see it in downtown Durham and uh, many places. Uh, Jules was just making sure Don knew that truck was in his lane. <laughs> He's on traffic aware cruise control right now, not autopilot. Um, yes, yeah, it's right there. Yeah. The mural. They've taken the building. Down. Right, it's just past the mural on the left is where the coffee shop and the Porsche, yeah. I'm going to call it warehouse, was. Yeah, this is it right here. They yeah, right here. Down. Yeah. Well, they needed um, to eventually clean it up. There's something I haven't seen in a while, a scooter. I, I think downtown yeah. Raleigh basically got, you know, they ran the scooters out of the city, which, um, Don and I don't agree with, I think. Um, there are plenty of bike lanes in downtown Raleigh, so explain to me why you can't be on the scooter. I, I realize the thing is, is that people don't want to be in the street because they're scared for their life, which I don't blame them. So they end up up on the sidewalk, and then the people walking are upset about it. I don't know why we can't just all be reasonable with our movements and, you know, the people walking not be on their phone and pay attention or if they're on their phone, don't be mad because somebody breezed by them on their scooter. Right. Um, and the people on the scooter going, you know, I don't need to go the max speed on this scooter if I'm up here on the sidewalk for a minute. I'll just, I know I'm sharing the sidewalk with pedestrians and I'm going to not go over, you know, uh, five, ten mile an hour. So, I mean, I've been on the sidewalk with people walking and they're rude. They got their briefcase. They're walking fast. They're not paying attention to what they're doing. So, it's all about considering the safety of everyone. And I don't know. I, I think we could have compromised instead of running the scooters out of town. And I'll just leave it there. Plus, they had this rule that you know, you had to be 18 to ride them. And of course that rule was getting broken because the kids downtown that are trying to get to their school, they want to ride the scooters. Yeah. So it's the young people, I it's don't, the old people, like always, the, they lose sleep every night. And it just stresses older people out to know that <laughs> young people you you? are having fun somewhere. <laughs> it just burns their butt. Right. Well, I did have this one gentleman on his scooter who looked like he had was taking a substance he probably shouldn't have been, and he was coming the wrong way on a one-way street on purpose trying to scare cars. I get it. And the police, 
uh, the police hauled him off sometimes. Yeah, it's just showing you this lanes are narrow here and you're kind of close to the curb. But it's yellow. I've never right. seen the yellow. It, it's always been yellow. It's just bigger. than. And the, when oh. I changed the fonts and spun this all around, oh, uh, it's know. bigger in Ruby and it's bigger in Jules. So the, the little yellow, they, it, it, the font is thicker and I think the arch is also okay. bigger. So you're seeing it more. I think it's drawing your eye more. Anyway, compromise. Compromise is good. Tolerance is good. These are things that, you know, during the year of COVID and stuff, I, I think we stepped a farther away from and I would encourage everyone to embrace again. Tolerance and patience are good qualities. All right, I'm going to check in. I'll see you in a few minutes. I wish Don could shut the door for me. And the outpatient parking lot they told us to park in the employee parking lot so we're listening to instructions they've added all of these tables these picnic tables weren't out here before fully support people coming outside to get some fresh air and eat or rest or whatever so instead of removing seats in this waiting room they've added all these plexiglass dividers Seems quite effective. Well, there's a Model 3. You can see Jules is just a little bit farther away. I survived. I was telling Don it was just a little bit shorter than I remember. Um, the two girls that handled me today, they were the right people for the job. Really calm voices. Um, you know, talking to you enough to keep you updated on what was going on. The tests are really only got to, well, they don't want you to move your head the whole time. And I'm sure I didn't, except for I probably did fall asleep one time, so hopefully I didn't move it in my sleep. But like, um, the contrast is the last six minutes, not the whole time so the iv is ready to go but they don't actually put hook you up to the contrast they pull you out long enough to hook you up and put you back in anyway i kept my eyes closed the whole time i was in the machine and that works good for me and um it's over all it's over except for the waiting for the results now so all my stuff is back on except for my hair barrette, all my jewelry. So a tip if you go for any imaging test is take a tiny Ziploc bag. You know, Michelle and I, we have those little small jewelry bags. But a um, pint science bag will work. And that way you can just take everything off. Because you'd be surprised at all the stuff you have on. Your watch, your hair barrette, your, your wedding band, your, well, girls, you know, mostly earrings. It's just very convenient to hand it to a loved one if you have a Ziploc bag. So don't forget the Ziploc bag. So I didn't catch Don doing it because I was doing so much other stuff. But um, he has put in the new, brand newly opened, like 10 days ago, Mebin Supercharger. And uh, we're going to go check it out. Just something to do today. We checked out Goldsboro a couple weeks ago. We're going to check out Mebin today. Well, you can see why we're going to check out the supercharger while we were already in Durham because it's uh, really easy to get on 85, uh, 40, and hop over there. It's only um, 18 miles. It's it's farther away from the house. Yeah, Don's doing this little circular thing over there. We'll be going in a loop again today. That's we won't right. be going the way we come. Yeah, that's, that's how right. we like it. That's we right. like varied road uh, yeah. travel. Yeah, when you have a Tesla or an electric car in general, you find out you take the long way home often. <laughs> Yeah, so now I'll be singing Super Tramp in my head for the rest of the trip. Thanks, yeah, Donnie. Appreciate long, that. Yeah. Long way home. Hey, Donnie, it's the exit with the outlets. Oh, enjoy. <laughs> Vera Bradley, probably the Croc store. See, Tanager Outlets. I didn't know that till just now. I've been to this outlet mall like one time before, and you know, back in the 80s, outlet stores were really outlet stores now not so much i when i went here the one time i didn't find anything i cared about they used to have really good outlets over here in burlington uh, mostly textile 
and um, yeah, now I'm not. So you're going left instead of right. It's on the wrong side from the outlet. So I see the sheets on the other side of the interstate. Well, that's a bummer. Couldn't, well, sheets is good because of bathrooms and all that stuff. But couldn't we have had it with the outlet so that you could shop while you charged? Maybe Electrify America will go in over there and... Yeah, and then that way when you need to do it in the middle of the night, you can deal with it. Right. Well, you can go to Sheets in the middle of the night and the outlet store in the day. All right, so, so, all right, so you almost made that turn. Sheets. It's on the left. Oh, in 500 left. feet, turn left onto Brundage Lane. Forest Oaks oh, except for... Not to get back on the interstate. That'll teach you to listen to your wife. Right. Yes, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, no. You did good, sweetie. Oh, well, we I'm might so be sorry. I'm Kyle, sorry. if you're willing to walk across this heavily congested road, yeah. um, you can get to your Starbucks. Probably just go to Starbucks first and then go to the go to the sheets. Because I don't... Well, I do see... The ability to press a button on the side street over here, but I don't see it on this side, so I don't know how helpful that is or isn't, but there is at least one no turn left on try to right help people right. cross the street. Chick-fil-A. I think it'd be safer to get to the Chick-fil-A. Okay, I am no not thinking left. about a frosted coffee. I am not. You can see the chargers right here. Yep. There's a white Model 3. Yep. Now you have arrived at your destination. Lots of bays for the two Model 3s. Yeah. Like I said, a lot of tanks. Alright, it's ramping up. I don't know that we're going to get much here, but it might. We are um, probably have too much. We're probably going okay to get 30%. All right, 136, 138, 139, 139 kilowatts, 136, 134. So I think that that point is we're uh, we're good. Let me see what have we got. I don't know what I got my limit set to. We'll do it 80. It says 25 minutes. Yeah. So. Anyway, it was preheating the battery all the way. Let's see. Display. This ought to be like a button that shouldn't be buried. I really feel like um, it should be um, readily available. So we're at 39% and... Well, 120 kilowatts. So, oh well. If you're pulled all the way back here, like especially on 2B and 2C, be really careful. And here on 1C and 1B, the tree limbs are really close if you open up the trunk. So be careful here. They're actually too our close. Our friend Ben is here. We are so excited to see him. Not Kyle's Ben, but our another Triangle Tesla Ben. And I never deployed all of my Tesla caching cars, so I'm going to deploy two here, and I've got one more pre-made ready to deploy at a later time. Hopefully these will go someplace fun and I need to check out and see where some of my others are. Ruby and my Ruby red dress are getting deployed today. There we so go. So there's eight pedestals here and um, you maybe can see a little bit better from this view, the overhang of the trees. So I think I'll mention to Zeb, hey, those trees really could use just a little more trim. Can we talk to the sheets people about trimming them and or, you know, I'll show up with my loppers and get rid of them. <laughs> no, I'm sure the thing to do is to ask, of course. Finished talking to our friend. You can see Don headed into sheets. We're down to 50 kilowatts and we're um, almost 82% charged. So we'll take off as soon as he gets back. 
it was really great to chat with Ben for a little bit. Most of us Tesla drivers, that's what we do if we see people we know or don't know at the supercharger, we get out and we chat with them. So we're over at the outlets now, which is on the other side of 40. Ben said that there are um, charge point chargers here, and so we just wanted to be thorough and drive past them. They are um, sort of near Express, if you're familiar with that store, the layout of this outlets. It's kind of amazing how crowded the outlets are. I mean, it's like really crowded. Um, ben said there was instructions to call um, to have the thing pushed down. They've they've done something good here, so they That's can't right. be iced. Right. But um, apparently they're not really locked, so you really can just sort of. Um, you can just sort of push them down. They're not currently right. locked anyway, but there's a number for security and so they do four cars. Yep. He says it's free. Yep. So there are there are chargers over here. Yippee. Yep. I like the idea that it's nice that they put those things because electric car people who really need to charge are going to do you know do what they've been told even if they have to wait for security. Right. But you know an ice car person seeing that they'll just drive by. Right, um, they are pretty close, oh, as you yeah. can see, yeah. which honestly, us, um, yeah. us EV people, we never ask for them to be close like that. Up there, way where there's actually some space, um, and, and it's not full, that'd be just fine. We don't really like them when they put them uh, where they can get ice too easy. We don't expect to have a front row parking, front row parking spot. We just are really happy when there are chargers, so please future additions let's not put them so close that people are tempted to ice them so we went um a little farther west from that exit i guess one exit up maybe yep, and we're maybe. gonna take 119 and then um something else down to pittsburgh anyway we don't want to go home on the interstate we're going to go home back country pretty roads we've done this a time or two before but not recently we're just not trying to, you know, we're in no rush to get back to the house. We have time for a little country drive. I think this may be our first time in Saxapaw, North Carolina. Well, that place is jumping. Yeah, it's a brewery. Oh. See the little tank there? I didn't catch the name of it, but it's a brewery. And that is, that's the River Mill apartment complex. And obviously that is the heart of Saxapaw. This looks like, a, I don't know. That was kind of an interesting building up there. Community Center. Compassion, love, understanding, huh? Oh, wow. Very pretty. That must be the Hall River. I don't know that for yeah, yeah, a fact, yeah. but I'd be willing to bet that's what it is. Whoever was honking, it wasn't at us. I assume we had nobody behind us, yeah. <laughs> Jules. <laughs> yeah, Saxapal Island Park is what this is. Don let me hop out long enough to come take uh, the pictures and video. That's an old mill building up there that they've repurposed. Saxapal Cotton Mill, 1844 from John Newlin. Owned by the Newlin family until 1873. Yeah, in 1978, the mill was sold to Dixie Yarns. In 1994, after 150 years of operation, the mill closed. After tornado damaged the mill in 95, the Jordan family purchased the mill property back from Dixie Yarns and began uh, work to revitalize the mill. It operates today as a beautifully restored cotton mill offering apartments, townhomes, and cottages. So a little bit like uh, 
the mill in Rocky Mount, not too, not too dissimilar. So I guess what we're seeing in that building across the way there is part is apartments or condos, and then you know up the hill just a little bit is uh, food and shops. While Don was here waiting for me, he noticed the e-tron. It's the first one we've seen in the wild. You know, um, Kyle brought one for us to take a look at and drive around. A friend of his from down in South Carolina, but I don't think we'd actually seen an e-tron. So that's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I'd probably like to come back here and walk someday. There are a lot of mill houses on this road. Um, that one's a little bigger, but there were a lot of the smaller mill houses. I just didn't get the camera up quick enough. Very similar to when we visited the um, South, Carolina. South Carolina hydroelectric dam. I forget the name of the little town right this minute. It's not coming to me, but... Me but yeah, you expect to see some of these little mill houses still standing. And some nicer old farmhouses too. So we're coming up on the courthouse in Pittsburgh, just cutting through on our way through the country back home. Too bad Johnny's not with us. Don commented that he would have loved to have gone into the S&T show to shop for a treat. Sorry, Johnny. We'll come another day. I always like the murals over here. Oh, they've they've changed the roundabout. They've taken down something going on over here. You can't actually go around the courthouse right courthouse now. right now. Not sure what's going on. Man, yeah, not sure what that project is all about. This is the important part of Main Street here, with S and T being up here on the left. Yeah. Maybe someday we'll go back to S and T. Well, maybe by Johnny's birthday in June, it'd be safe to come over. We'll see. Well, certainly for takeout. I'm sure he would like that. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll stay in business. Something tells me they're going to be just fine. Yeah. Well, every time we've come by, they've been doing good takeout business, so. Well, actually, I'm going to go and let you get your whirly birds up here. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's an antique store. French Connections, it says. There's the courthouse. Well, hopefully, whatever they're doing, it'll all be better after they're done. Yeah, well, I certainly don't want them to lose the nice roundabout. It was always pretty cool. Yep, I agree. Looks like I see sewer or water line over there. Yeah. If I had to guess, that's what the roads tore up about. I always smile when we come over these uh, railroad tracks here by the paper plant because... Um, <clears throat> When we had Sapphire, I may have taken that track uh, fast enough that we were, you know, just a little in the air going over the track. You think? <laughs> I think I might have been ready to fly. Yes. Yeah. See? Paper plant. Yeah. North Carolina's got a lot of pines and we got a lot of pulp plants. You're such a good boy, taking care of your car. That's right. We got our dish equipment box dropped off at UPS, and now I'm running into PetSmart. Don's letting me run a couple errands while we're out, and it's, you know, convenient I get door service. It's not quite as good as with Ruby, where you could pop the door for me, but it's, cl it's close enough. Goodness gracious, you know, I'm just... All day today, I've just been nothing short of amazed at the number of people out and shopping. I guess I, you know, people don't shop during the work week, but goodness, it's just five zillion tons of people out here. It's like Black Friday parking lot. Well, we're glad the UPS store now has Saturday hours. We appreciate that. Hopefully, Pet, Pet Smart will have poultry platter 
or I'll be running over to Walmart. Thank goodness they had two cases plus nine more cans.